Bang. Wo bist du? Are you are you still there? Target locked. Predictive reasoning. So you can gain one energy or three energy. There's RNG. So if you do a good job, it's a ton of energy. And it is all based on your endurance stat. Which would make which makes sense because it's you unlock it with your endurance stat, so it's self-contained synergy. You awaken from dreams of Maywick's amber eyes, floating in a pool of dark fluid. It was difficult to get sleep, and you suspect that it isn't about to change anytime soon, not after what happened. But you also feel something else as you get up. Thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water like every morning. You feel something is lifted, something that has been hanging over you since you arrived on the station. You try not to think too hard about it, to question it. You just let that lightness stay, let it settle as you go through your routine, your routines. You hope that, your hope is that if you don't focus on it, don't look at it directly, it won't get scared and leave you. That the lightness will stay for this cycle and then another and then another. Because after all that's happened, a little lightness would be nice. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Poor guy. Like, one reprieve at long last. The idea that you're not actively being hunted for once. And maybe you can eke out a, a survival here. Despite it all. So I can buy shipmine fragments, but I, I can only buy two. And it's relatively expensive. But if I get enough of these guys, right? I can just go get a shipmine. Yeah, five Havenage. But I can't speed by Havenage hacking, which is frustrating. You get the dots you get, and I am given a two. One? No, it really is always a two, huh? I don't want to anger the other one. And yeah, I can't. I can't get a. I can't get a, a, a better number here. Whoa. Where's my level up screen? <clears throat> Yay! Energy. Hmm. You straight up don't get paid, though. That's kind of not... I'd rather spend money, I think, because I can further my goals with my dice rolls. Whereas if I don't get paid... Yeah. Because I can pay to get my, my, my health back up. Less than ever before, evenly. And that's handy. Because then I still have my dice. And we have a lot of things to potentially <clears throat> juggle here. I think I'm closest to finishing this one, potentially. Are we almost there with the sidereal? I got really good dice rolls today, too. I can chunk this dude up. I don't want to waste the bonus, but I also don't want to risk getting hurt, so I guess I'll, I'll do it. We're gonna- we're technically overproducing a little bit. I do get paid, at least. And I got some random scrap, so that's good. Progress towards my scrap goal. So at least I can start building a house. But will I need to? Your crew slowly filters out of the shipyard locker room, the bubbling chatter reducing with each group that leaves. There's excitement in the air. Haven has just made an announcement. The assembly teams are done. Sat on the locker room bench, you can feel the sidereal out there. Its hulking mass now immediately familiar to you. 
Over the past cycles, you have watched it grow, be assembled. You have walked through its veins and welded its bones. Now it is ready for the final stage. It will go to testing now, then enter a final process of sealing and resealing, checking and rechecking before it is deemed su uh, suitable for its generational trip. But for now, your work is done. You can't help but feel proud. A cough interrupts your thoughts. It's Lem, changing out his work gear. Mina nowhere to be seen. He smiles. She'll be ready soon. Where's Mina? You two are fast friends, huh? She's being watched at home. Now I'm on the work team, I can afford a bit of help. He corrects himself. Was on the work team, I mean. We're all out of a job now. He quickly adds, not that I'm complaining. He comes to sit beside you on the bench. She got to be in her best shape. She's got to be in her best shape when she carries you, Mina, and me out of here. So confident. L Lem smiles apologetically. Why not? I figure I'm due a lucky turn by now. He rubs his hands nervously. No use in wondering what if. Until the draw, anyway. And there's a few cycles till then. Lem is right, but the odds seem unlikely anyway. How many are working in the shipyard? Hundreds? A thousand? You've certainly seen more faces than you can count pass through. And are the Sealess Foundation even going to keep their promise? Out here on the eye, you get the sense that no one will hold them to it. Why else would they would they be building the sidereal in a surrogate system? As you think, Lem watches you with a worried look. Tell me about Celis. The Foundation? He thinks. I'm not sure I know much more than you. I hear they have a planet in mind for the Sidereal. Something temperate and habitable. I think they run by... They are run by some rich folk from the core. People interested in doing things different. Different how? Lem looks into space. Well, I guess they don't like the way the core runs things. All these surrogate systems like this one, feeding resources into their silos. It's a pyramid of sorts, and we are the bottom layer. I guess Celis wants to change that. I'd rather keep my mind on the prize, so to speak. I don't much care what they are, what they are for or against, as long as they can help us get out of here. He sighs. You ever been in a thunderstorm, sleeper? A real big one? No. Shame. Lem shakes his head. The sound, the smell, the rain hammering down, the whole sky stretching out and stretched out and bruised, roaring and huge. The place I was born, New Pembroke, a dry old rock in the Conway system, had two seasons. One of them was as dry as bone, dusty, ugly. The other was one long storm, a side effect of the terraforming efforts, they said. Rain used to rattle off the roofs like bullets. It washed the dust away, turned the streets to rivers. It'd sing us to sleep and wake us in the morning. We'd wait half a year just to see it again. The best day was the one where the first drops fell, he sniffs. Some days I wake up swearing I can hear it again. I was thinking, Mina has never seen a storm, never even felt rain. She's grown up here. The ring her only horizon, always in the dark. I want to change that for her. You will. Of course. Almost there. Lem stands, stretching. Best get back to the little one anyway. With the shifts done, I reckon she'll be happy to have me home for a few cycles. He shoulders his gear. See you in a few. For the draw, I'll be there. Right on. He grins. Lem leaves, making you the last person in the cavernous locker room. As you sit, you think about rain, and a little hope creeps in. Is it possible? Could the sidereal really take you to a planet? A place with the weather, with skies, with life? You get up quickly, before you can think about it anymore. It's too soon for hope, too dangerous. There's work to be done. Sleeper, how are you going to survive on the sidereal? You need this. It doesn't fix the core problem. <laughs> How do you survive there? Ah, this has six and that has three. What's going on here?
sea lists are apparently going to start moving to the Sidereal Horizon hub soon. Okay. So that so this is the draw and this is the departure. So the horizon's leaving in six cycles. In addition to the draw being in three cycles. So we still have all of a while to play before we even consider whether what this is gonna do and nested parallel storylines to consider and what not. This isn't leaving yet. I would definitely like to get the whole thing at once the way I'm planning on doing it. I don't think I'm yeah, I don't think I'm gonna buy from them like, ever again. And you're, and you're dead until spores. I'm doing the thing where I, I navigate the place from bottom to top to try to keep track of all of the, the different things I could be doing, because, uh... It's become a lot. <laughs> Did I get a point? Not until the draw, probably. Oh, well. Yeah, I think I want instant karma next, which is going to be three points to get there. Next one will be plus one to predictive reasoning, which just means another thing I'm better at. I mean, I find it interesting that the best bonus you can get is a plus two, which is pretty good. I mean, right now, a plus one takes an edge case and upgrades it. It's very interesting because this game splits the dice into three categories. You essentially roll, because a, a, a one and a two are the same thing. A, a three and a four are the same thing. A five and a six are the same thing, as far as actually using dice go. But they're also a coin flip essentially saying this is upgradable and this is not upgradable. So if you get the top half of each category, it's not a better dice <clears throat> in a vacuum, but if you have the plus one, it becomes the next better the next better category. Whereas if it's the lower end, then you're screwed. And so that makes a really significant distinction between these two upgrades here. But because the best you can do is make it a plus two, you also never gain the power to uh, completely supplant the dice, although a plus two is pretty strong. A category upgrade in a th game with three categories is pretty strong. But you never are free of the dice. You always have to deal with them. No matter what. Yeah, that's where you, you turn in half an inch things. Can't do much with the caster for a bit. And these are risky. What? <clears throat> I didn't know that was an option. I thought they explained you only lose condition as a result of dangerous things. This one, the negative outcome makes me lose condition and it's labeled as risky. The positive one gives me scrap components apparently, which means I can earn my house by doing this activity. But I don't, I don't want to use... I don't want to use uh, my one if it's going to potentially give me a loss of condition. A loss of energy would be pretty unideal too though, but this one also can give me energy, so it's all over the place. It's going to mostly be a neutral outcome though. I've not done any of this yet. Danger, minus condition, double minus energy. Not ideal. This is something I could try? Yeah. Alright, well I threw that away and accomplished nothing. And now I gotta eat again. No, I don't have to eat again, because one is fine. I'm starving. I should have used the shittier dice on sunbathing due to the lack of negative outcomes. That would have been the correct move. Let's see if I can get rid of the anti-hacking thing once and for all, and then I can just turn hacking into a positive thing for myself. Maybe. I haven't been here for a while, sealed the dock. Oh wait, no. Uh, yeah, I'm at five. I have to go to you first. It's up here in the in the low end, caster's table. Give 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 an entire ship mind core. Yep, that's that's that is. It's not a fragment. It's the entire thing. 
<clears throat> that's significantly easier than past approaches to dealing with that problem. Okay, so now I can deal with the second ship mind in this game. Here you go, Neovent. It's been a long time. Because that was a... I used up the resource. That was a rare resource that I was not getting back for a while. Sleeper. Must express plan before we begin. Neovent is impatient. The prospect of being free of the vending machine clearly too much to take. Shipmind has no output features. Will be mute until slotted. You won't be able to speak? Correct. Do not worry. The servo motors in the machine begin to rev. Neovent's anxiety clear. First, imprint shipmind. Then slot imprinted shipmind into physical ports close to hunter nests. Once slotted, we'll track hunter at each. Tracking will find core nest. Slot ship mind at core nest. Follow hunter data to hunter. Hunter will conclude sentience. Hunter will invoke killer. And killer will kill. Yes. The lights in the vending machine cycle to Neoven as Neoven pr pr prepares. Physical ports likely sealed an old station. We'll need keys, but yes, simple. The vending machine rocks a little. Any questions before imprinting? Why slot you physically? I cannot access via network. Too dangerous. Hunter will find immediately. The lights flicker. I'm not like you. Hybrid. I'm native to cloud. Easy prey. What's the core nest? Hunter keeps central data storage. Protocol must keep data outside itself, outside self, linked to secondary nests, can triangulate from there. That's it. Let's start. The sound of all the servo motors starting up at once is painful. The screeches rattle from the hard surfaces of the sealed dock and come back at all angles. Neovent better be quick, or Havenish security will be here. Neoven's voice appears among the squeals, like a whisper carried by the wind. Machine is not designed for this task. Few sensors. Limited inputs. I work blind. Wish me luck. In the top part of the compartment, a set of arms aligns with the ship mind, clunkily scraping against it. Can I help? Silence best. Also, if machine ignite, put out fire. <laughs> oh no. The metal creaks as the servos open the ship mind. Its layers of silicon nested like an onion skin. Once again, the main arm of the machine rapidly shifts back and forth, realigning the microscopic components, accessing and rewriting them, and printing Neovend into its physical form. As you watch the hypnotic motion, your mind drifts to your own creation. What processes were used to emulate your mind, to copy the neural structure of that person who, as far as you know, still sleeps in some distant facility? What was lost? In what ways are you a copy of that person, and in what ways are you something new? You know this much. You are a convenient loophole. A way of circumnavigating the illegality of sentient AI. After all, you are an emulation, not a true digital being. You are neurologically limited, still human. But what you become... But what would you become if you, es if, if you could escape this frame? When there would the limits lie? The screeching stops. The machine powers down, dropping the bay into darkness. In the top compo compartment, the, the ship mind is whole again. You reach up and take it down, heavy and cold to the touch. Is Neovend inside this thing? Or did the process fail? There's only one way to know. Time to find a nest to slot them into. Here's where we get into the transporter problem and AI as a concept and blah 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 blah. Just like how you were copied and are not the same person as the sleeper, Neovend just put a copy of themselves in the ship mind. But, Neo but also Neovend is still in the vending machine. Like, either, either, they're, either they're still in the vending machine and there's two Neovends right now, or they deleted themselves, in which case they died. But the person, or the AI, or the sentience, or whatever, this plus one predictive reasoning, that is inside of the thing I'm holding is not the same entity that is inside the vending machine. They can exist simultaneously and independently. Ah, now is where I use the encrypted keys. 
which means I need to get more encrypted keys, which means I need to go hacking more, which means I'm going to get hurt again. Whee! What? Oh wait, no, I uh, I'm, I use Neovent. I can't read the text. But I think it says imprinted ship mind. I thought I needed another ship mind for a second there. I was freaking out. Okay. So now I need to do I need to do that three times, right? So I need to find the other ones. This one's gonna be gone? No, it's not. But it, it is done though, right? So I need to find the other ones. Uh deal with Hunter. None of these objectives are over when you think they're going to be over. They're always way longer. So one, two, three. Okay, they're all in this region. That needs a key. And that needs a key. So I need to use three keys. So those do have a purpose now. For a while there, I was like, "Why do I want to hack more of these?" Because it, 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 they were they were around, but I'm like, "But it wasn't justifying what you do th with them." But that one requires a two. That one requires a one. So I need a one and a two again, and all I have is threes and a six. So that's gonna be on hold for a bit. And yes, I am kind of intentionally ignoring, once again, my ability to progress forward via money. Because I'm just trying to deal with the already large number of storylines and things to get to track in the existing area before I expand my world to have even more complex stuff. Even though that will also feed back into, like, I think that's how I get my mushrooms and my spores and other stuff that I need for my other storylines. But I still have so many things to progress here that I don't want to overwhelm myself or you, haha. <laughs> Because you guys, even though, frankly, on average, you guys pay significantly less attention, so you're, like, you're just like, oh, that's happening now? Okay. That's pretty much the level most of the audience is usually operating on. This is just, yeah, there's no progression here. It's just ways of making money or getting income, scrap pile. This is from this is a, this is a scrap that I I get yeah. All right, so I need three more scrap. I can't buy that from this guy. In fact, I don't remember if I can get scrap anywhere besides the fact that I randomly get scrap from. Yeah, so I guess I should do this at the, I should do this person's tasks. Uh, so we know that we can get scrap from collecting tithe. So I can give that a go. Especially with my plus six being guaranteed positive outcome. And so, we'll feel out this Yada Gun situation and see if they are anywhere as acceptable as they claim to be. 25% chance of losing condition. Uh, I really prefer not to lose condition if I can avoid it. Are the free spoke options better looking? Both of these make you lose condition also. Even if they are things I have a plus one at, but a plus one isn't enough to change my thing into another condition. Uh, I might as well focus on one thing, I guess. It's not ideal, but it's also only a 25% chance. I say that right before the game hits me with it three times. Here's a significant chance of bonus energy. But I am trying to build my house. If I'm really lucky, I could get my whole house in one go. I won't. It's only a, I think it's only the 25% chance gives me that outcome. Ow. There's the 25% chance of the bad happening. Thanks. Right out of the bat. Hey! Neutral outcome. I only gained energy. I think I gained energy from my skill for engaging. Yeah. Real seeker. Hey, scrap components. Okay. So I came I got the negative outcome I didn't want, but only once. And then I got I got surprisingly close to the positive outcome I said would never happen. 
which is me getting three in a row. But I do have that much of a house ready to build. So I guess that's neat. Uh, I got a little bit of energy so I don't have to eat. Undoes my, my negative energy outcome from earlier. I am down. Hello, Harden. That's probably not a good sign. And also this other stuff that's happening. Alright, Keynode. I'm, okay. I'm gonna get attacked by the thingy. Hopefully it doesn't kill me. The game likes to threaten you with stuff that's totally gonna come and get you, but then... It doesn't quite kill you as bad as it suggests that it might. Wait, did I lose? Did no event happen? Did I even lose condition? I heard this. I heard the roar. I guess I won't look the look it in the mouth. It's a little clunky, you have to leave and come back, because it's the only way for the event to replace itself with a new event. Goofy interface stuff. Okay. Two down. The white on white is a problem. They could really use a, a bit of an outline or something. I know that, but it probably contradicts the visual aesthetic a little bit, but it's just like, no. No, I shouldn't, because like the, the, they, they put a gray background behind everything else. It's just the action that you click on that is like unreadable. Or it's not even the action you click on, it's the one that explains what to put into a slot. It's kind of important information. Alright, let's go after the hunter. As you leave the nest, something flips. You find yourself inverted, floating, dragging by one arm through the cloud. The threads shift and realign as if they are leading you somewhere. Look at, look at your hand. You look down, expecting to see the heavy cylinder of the ship mind in your hand, but in its place is an orrery, I guess. A sphere so bright it burns your eyes is surrounded by rings and orbits. Other spheres tracing silken lines through space. And as you look closer, you pick out a thousand sigils of a thousand stations and ships, floating like smoke, like dust. You look up and see a corridor, a canyon, a street in the low end. On either side, buildings flicker with markers of activity, sigils showing network access, data transfer, download, upload. Between them dance c ghosts, protocols carrying or mirroring or shadowing data, sometimes silent, sometimes chaotic. This place moves unlike any digital space you ever imagined. Something strange is happening here. Then you see it. Below the stacked rooms, the units and apartments, the wires and the pipes and the buzzing systems that run through it all. In the warrens beneath the low end is the, warrior, is the hunter's core nest. This is where you must go. Well, well, well. Let's get a little food in case any of the events that are potentially happening today exhaust me. Because the hardened situation is also coming up. Two separate, sort of hacky related storylines. How about the draw? Is the draw. The draw is tomorrow. Ooh. Lauren. Hunt. Repeatable action. You lose condition when you mess up. Man, okay. I lost energy. The neutral and neutral outcome makes you lose energy, but negative outcome makes you lose condition. It takes six attempts to find the nest. The dark of the warrens is exhausting, with little sense of direction. It is like crawling through a sleeping creature's veins. And there's a locked action? Requires... 
plus one interface. War and tracking. Finding the nest should be as easy as closing your eyes and letting the cloud guide you. But is it safe? This close to the hunter? That one lets you find the nest even faster via interfacing ability instead of intuit ability. You can get four of it done in one go. But, you, but if you fuck up, you lose double condition. So the consequences are worse. The dripping, dark, derelict corridors of the Warrens hunt, uh, hide the hunter's final nest. You must find it. Alright, so that's not resolving today. It's a long-term goal again. But Harden's happening. It's been more than a few cycles since Feng confronted Harden, and the silence since has been noticeable. In your time with Feng, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable, but you did expect to hear the end of whatever plan he'd put into action. But if he won't come to you, you, you think, as you approach the Havenage building, then it's time to come to him. After all, he did promise to fix your tracker, and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open, the light pouring out of the once dark room. Stacks of servers and terminals sit outside the bay, suddenly robbed of their mystery by the bright flood lamps. A figure in Havenage security fatigue steps out of the bay, as you get closer, carrying a stack of hardware. Approach. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Feng's stash with what looks like hazard tape. This isn't good. <clears throat> you again. Harden is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that he barely noticed that you barely noticed him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrawled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Feng's collusions. You see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Harden. Harden pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We have all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around at the stacks of hardware. Spying on, fo on fellow Havenage members, hoarding Solheim mat materials, an obsession with corporate data. It speaks for itself, does it not? That was his job. And what would you know about jobs, sleeper? He looks up at the glass roof above and the stars beyond. We are the ones that provide the oxygen you are breathing, the light you are seeing, the systems you use every day to live out your cycles. This place was hard, fo hard fought for, sleeper. It took work, diplomacy, and strength to stop the eye descending into chaos after Solheim collapsed. Not blind conviction or self-interest. You're the self-interested one. More accusations. What have you achieved, sleeper? Your entire existence is proof of your self-interest. Signing yourself over to be emulated rather than work yourself. Whether you remember it or not, you suffer from the same short-sighted perspective as the person you were copied from. You see, sleeper. We are proud of our history here. Andre Erlen and the First Union founded this place. Havenage has wielded his values into the station's very walls. We will never turn uh, turn away the hard-working, the just, the true citizens of the Eye. Havenage aren't a gang like Yadagon. We aren't pirates like half the spacers you'll meet in the hub, or esoterics like those Haifa radicals in the Greenway. We are the backbone of this place, proud and true. We named Erlin's Eye, Sleeper. This is our station. He meets your eye. So please, take your false accusations elsewhere before I decide I need that confession after all. History will catch up with you. I'm not afraid of history, Sleeper. We are making it here, cycle by cycle. He smiles. If you have any pride, you'll give up Feng the moment he contacts you. You know where to find me. With that, Harden turns his back and walks towards the security officers, ordering them to continue to clear out. As they do something, as they do, something catches your eye among the among one of the server stacks, a crumpled hand-printed box of synthetic chewing gum. 
a penguin character grinning from the brightly colored card. And scrawled onto it a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. Take it. You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one's watching, and then turn away, just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the bay. Where have you gone, Fang? And where the hell is Tambor? Isn't that the tea place or something? What's this place called? Yeah, Tambor Tea House. There we go. I knew what it was, you dummy! Catch up with me, game. Do do do. They're doing a commentary. It's definitely true that each individual faction represents a different element of real life in some way or other. Well, that's really weird looking at it at that angle. Whoa. Wasn't it horizontal before? As much as directions exist? But Fang... I feel like Fang might most directly represent, like, modern neoliberal society. Not, sorry, not Fang. <laughs> Harden and, uh, and Havenage. A system that pretends that everyone... That the, 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 the pretends that the world is just and things make sense and this how can you imagine a system outside of what we have right now it's literally how everything that you ever have had was created but also a lot of safeguards put in place to stamp down anything that actually disrupts what they have because the free any any semblance of freedom is kind of just a lie My gum box. You feel stupid doing this, but the penguin says take me to Tambor, and this is the only Tambor you can find. Hello, Pengi. It's just a it's just a prize redemption that has nothing to do with him. <laughs> the waitress looks at you with suspicion as you hand over the box. Is this the right place? As you go to leave the Tambor tea house, a hand falls on your shoulder. Sleeper? Feng hisses from behind you. How did you find me? The penguin? Penguin? What are you? He thinks for a second. Oh, do you mean... He mimes throwing gum in his mouth. That wasn't meant for you specifically, but... He cringes. Look, it doesn't matter. Come, let's sit. <laughs> uh, I Was I right? Is it literally just some kind of like, like a prize redemption thing that happened to give away the place that he was laying low at, and he basically left, he basically left a loose end that would have got him, him caught. But I got, but I found it thinking it was a secret message. <laughs> ben guides you down a set of stairs, to one of the tambor's lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines, all connected by a, a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars, and conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. I think the wait waitress has no idea what, what she's supposed to do with that gum. Bang sees you looking around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house part is a bit of a misnomer though. You can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks a booth. Itself fashioned from some old salvage tank or container, lined with spongy insulation foam, and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. Don't suppose you've seen any Havenage types? They don't usually come out this far. Only you. Ha! Not anymore, I'm afraid. Suspended without appeal. Turns out Harden has someone's ear. He grins. Doesn't bother me, though. It shows we hit a nerve back there. He picks a scrappy, hand-scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? Why are you so calm? You know any reason I shouldn't be? He leans in, suddenly concerned, and then waves the idea away. Hold that thought. Let's order first. Feng is right. The menu is ridiculous. There are at least ten different infusions, most of which you can't make out, but the paper is dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and cocktails. 
black tea is listed without a price as a seasonal specialty. So he ran into Hardin. Was he pissed? Fang doesn't wait for an answer. That snake is so self-righteous he might actually believe that Erlen would approve of his meritocracy bullshit. He taps on the table. If Havenage was like it should be, then it would like it was founded to be. They would have shouted him down at any council meeting he dared to mention true citizens. He sighs. But I guess his, his kind run the place now. Oh, that just sounds like fascism. A young woman with a vine tattoo snaking up her arm turns up at the booth, a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. Uh, kelp infusion. She nods and notes you. And notes it. And you? She begins, looking to Fang. But when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What the? Fang shrinks a little. You are supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. <laughs> you work here? Fang waves you to be quiet. Look, Jenna, it's... Let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Wave. <laughs> Bang doesn't look pleased. Doesn't look pleased at me waving? Don't fucking put this on me. Two minutes, says Jenna, pointing at Fang. And only because I don't want to want to get dragged into whatever this is. She gestures at the table and walks off. <clears throat> what? Fang stretches out on the booth. You know how it is. We all have to eat. Plus, he leans in. This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Remember that web of connections that Harden pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. And if we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be getting up to in the eye, those are the people we have to find. Feng is almost whispering now. There's a couple of them I suspect are in Low End, and well, almost everyone in Low End comes through this place at one time or another. It brings a modified slate out onto the table. I've set this up so whenever any when anyone with the network signature I'm looking for comes into close proximity, it'll mark them. Once they're marked, we can break through their access protocols and get to the, to the good stuff inside. We just have to find them first. Hence the hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Suddenly, a smile grows across his face. Wait, I have an idea. Oh no. Look, I can't cover enough of low end on my own. So far, I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. What am I getting into? Well, Fang has a hang a hang dog look. We need to get you out and about in the low end, in close proximity to as many people and residences as possible. And it turns out my friend Minji uh, needs some help with deliveries. As in Minji Express. So you already know him. Perfect. Feng places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate and runs the same marketing protocol. If you get near, if you get near any of our targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery shifts for old Minji, and soon enough, we'll have the place covered. Fang. Don't give me that. You think I like working here? And I thought and I thought you could use the tips. He grins. We are in this together, right? Are we? Yes. You think Harden is happy to have you wandering around the place? He might have let you off for now, but I'm sure he has his eye on you. This is on you, too. Fang slips the slate. Now this is on you, too. Fang slips his slate back under his clothes. Just head on up to Minji Express, take a delivery shift, and we'll see what shakes up. You manage to find anyone extracting data, bring it right down here to me. They have to, they have me on double shifts, so I, sh I shouldn't be hard to find. Jenna walks past, carrying a tray of drinks, and sharply catches Fang's eye. I don't think she's bringing your drink, he stands. I think it's time we called this meeting to a close. You bring the receiver from the table. You grab the receiver from the table and slip it into your pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe, Fang adds, before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. Fang! <laughs> Alright, well now that other that shop that didn't seem to have an objective does have an objective. So all the more reason to do that, deal with that now. Hmm. 
We are ja we are uh, juggling a lot at the moment. Minji Express. Anything here I can do safely? Noodle manufacturer, which does not help with this. I have to be doing deliveries. You get variable amounts of money because he doesn't pay very much, but you might get tips. So low income is low money. It doesn't say that a negative thing can happen, though. Let's let's get proved wrong immediately by a negative thing happening. Minus energy. Oh yeah, that's not listed on the number of things that can happen. It seems like they're only willing to list two things, so sometimes the things that might happen aren't listed. It's kind of annoying. So I didn't have any luck finding a target. That's it for now. Uh, my food's okay. Oh, I could have finished building my house. I'm noticing that Feng talks about us being in this together or whatever, but he noticeably is not, uh, you know, actually helping us with our problem. He's continually not helping with the tracker or even mentioning it in terms of things that might come up. <laughs> 